Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. I am happy to report that today it is hot and humid, but that's because it rained. So I'm super thrilled about that and I'm really looking forward to doing my next garden tour with you. My name's Soleil and I garden here in mid Michigan and we are at zone 5B. So one of the things that happens this time of year is we start to change over into some more of the fall blooming uh, specimens in the garden. And so what that means is some of the summer ones are going to need some deadheading and some tidying up to make the garden look nice and fresh again. So we're gonna start uh, with the dianthus that I have along this front border here. So these are the pink pom-pom dianthus and they bloom early on in the spring and they have really beautiful bright pink flowers on them and they grow nice and low just like you see them right now but they really do need some cleaning up so we're going to cut them right back and hope that they might even flesh out and give us one more set of blooms before the fall after the dianthus we're going to come through here and we're going to trim back my hedge of the liatris so this is liatris spicata which is also called sometimes blazing star or gay feather and it is pretty much at the end of its blooms. The pollinators really enjoy this plant, um, but now it's gonna be time to cut it back and we definitely cut it back quite far. So I'll show you how that's done as well. So a gardener's work is constant and when we're doing one thing, if we see something else that needs to be done right away, especially like a weed growing, it's important to pull it. So I always pull weeds whenever I see them. A lot of times I get asked on this channel, like how do I keep my garden free of weeds? And my answer is usually, one, I spend time mulching it every single year. And two, when I see a weed, I pull a weed. So here's a small little dianthus and let's just get started. You can see as I pull it away that it has a very small stem at the base, but I just pull it all kind of together like this nice and bushy and then I trim it back. And then if we still see some really long ones, I might trim it back even further. This one was just planted this year and it was a clearance plant. So I think it's doing really well. And by doing it this way, I can actually get through the process fairly quickly here. And I was gonna throw these into my bin over here, so I don't know why I threw them down on the ground, because sometimes I do that. Of course, my husband hates that, but. All right, this one's really sprawly. So I'm gonna cut off this whole section right here. And this whole section right here. And I know it looks pretty drastic, but it's really gonna help it, especially after all of this rain that we just got. So this one may actually be trying to root in a little bit over here, but I don't really um, want it to necessarily spread. I like to keep it right in between the boxwoods. Maybe next year I'll let it spread a little bit more after they get more established. I planted the first ones last year and then some more earlier this year. So they haven't been here for that long. You can see some of the spent blooms right here. Just cut those tops off as well. They were definitely getting pretty dry and dehydrated as a result of our heat wave and lack of rain. Here's another weed. So again, if it's something really quick while I'm down here, I'm gonna get it. That will prevent me from having to come back here and work on this bed again later. I don't think I'm getting this violet very well. It's probably going to stay here because they have these rhizomes that go pretty far down into the soil. If you don't get them all the way out, they'll just grow back. These definitely look very tired and very leggy. So 
hopefully they'll enjoy this pruning. Those violets sure are pesky if you have them. They get everywhere. They're really pretty. Sometimes deadheading is more an art than a science. You have to decide how much you want to cut back and how much you want to leave. Again, just haven't gotten a really good rain. Now is the perfect time to cut them back because they're going to put out a nice fresh set of leaves. At least that's the plan. Sometimes dianthus will actually root in themselves as they spread their little branches in the mulch. Another way to do dianthus is to use your hedge clippers. And uh, I definitely have done that before as well. The Liatris, these are pretty tall, but I take them all the way back, almost completely to the ground. And typically, the grassy foliage is still there after you cut this uh, bloom spikes back. So that helps to kind of cover up where you have cut back.
All right, well, I'm working up a sweat here, but we're gonna keep going. I've got this betony that I'm gonna clip back as well, because these are all spent blooms. And I'm also going to be trimming back this geranium over here. So this betony, all I'm gonna do is clip back each one of these stems and the foliage below will actually just hide it. Betony is sometimes referred to as Dacky's humilo because it's a member of the same family as lamb's ear. And uh, it's an amazing pollinator attractor. It is also a native plant. So um, even though the liatris definitely attract the pollinators and they love them, if they have their choice between the two, they likely will pick this Dacky's because it just, I don't know, it just draws them in like magnets. Quite a bit of bug damage on this plant this year. Um, but I don't garden for perfection and I do like to make sure that I garden for nature as well as for my enjoyment. So I don't mind a little bit of tattering on my leaves. I means something else besides me is getting an enjoyment out of the garden. Now over here, this is a dreamland geranium and you can see it's gotten rather leggy, but it's starting to put up some fresh growth in the center. So we're just gonna cut all of this leggy growth that is around the outside and let those center leaves flourish. That looks a lot better. All right, well, now that we're done with the deadheading, let's just take a look at this bed and see how nice and clean and fresh it looks. I really think that um, without those, it opens up this bed a lot. And I do like leaving behind that sort of grassy hedge because it definitely adds interest to the bed. I'm also gonna tackle this liatris right here because it's about done blooming as well. Now this one I am not as concerned about leaving the grass foliage behind because there are some other plants here, but I will still use the same technique. If you want, you can cut these back all the way to the ground simply using some hedge clippers. That's absolutely fine. Uh, I'm just showing you the technique that I use and sharing with you the reason why I prefer that technique over shearing it all the way back. Now, if I was in a hurry and running out of time, I would definitely get out the shears and just go for it. nice little hooker right there that I'd rather see so I'm gonna clip these back all right I think that looks really nice and clean now 
I might even trim back some more of that grass foliage. Let's see. So I'm going to trim this, this foliage back as well so that this hosta can shine again and the Pullman area. So this is the Golden Tierra Hosta. And we're going to be deadheading this now. And I simply cut the stalks back below the leaves in order to cover them up. And this is a major pollinator attractor. Um, if you look closely uh, at some of the bloom stalks, you can see how well they've been pollinated because you will see all of the little seed heads on each and every one of them is beginning to form and so we want to make sure that we don't put all of the energy into the seeds we want to be able to have some energy also go back into the roots before the winter time these are such prolific bloomers though it can uh, be a little bit of a pain to deadhead them but they also do have really pretty flowers so i think it's worth it um, you know, some people don't like necessarily the flowers on their hostas, but many people do. And uh, they definitely attract a lot of pollinators, as well as I've heard people get hummingbirds in their yards with them. I have not had hummingbirds come to my hostas yet. In fact, there's a bumblebee trying to get at these right now. <laughs> It will look so much more tidy when we get finished with this. And unfortunately, there's just no real quick way uh, to do this because of the number of blooms and not wanting to cut off the leaves as you do the deadheading. Well, we've tidied this up and I think it looks beautiful, doesn't it? So much nicer and calmer and peaceful. In the back, you see the Magnus Coneflower. That's a really nice, tall, purple coneflower. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today and hopefully it inspires you or motivates you to get out in the garden and do a little deadheading of your own or some other chore that maybe you're putting off doing. I know it always motivates me when I see others doing some of the work that I need to get done. Also, I just am looking forward to doing another video coming up soon. We're going to be doing the garden tour, and I think we're also going to do a garden tour about the hydrangeas that I have in my landscape, just to show you how they're doing and talk a little bit about each one, because we have quite a few different varieties. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. Thanks again for joining me today, and we'll see you next time. Bye!